here are symbols for the 200th commencement of Amos College. Please be in order. We begin today's ceremony with the national anthem, which will be performed by Ingrid Weffing, class of 2021. I invite those who are able to stand. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the You may be seated. Thank you, Ingrid. How beautiful. And thank you to Sheriff Robert Garvey, who once again has come out of retirement to be here with us. How we all wish that we were on the beautiful first year quad gazing out at those beautiful mountains. Nonatuck homeland in the Kunitek Valley, which has been and is still today a crossroads of multiple native nations and a place of exchange. And these are not merely historical relationships with the college. They are enduring connections. I want to welcome all the friends and family members who are watching today, whether you are in Lafrac or whether you are somewhere else or at your homes. On behalf of all of our graduates, we thank all of you who have stood beside our students and behind them for the many years to make this day possible. Could I ask the graduates to stand and give thanks to your friends and families And could I ask the seniors to remain standing and have the faculty, our scholars, stand so that you can thank them for their challenges, their inspiration, and their mentoring to get you here today. And may I ask everyone to continue to stand to thank the extraordinary staff of Amherst College who, 
whose work has gotten us as safely as any institution through COVID, and who, between yesterday afternoon and today, reconstructed the cage so that it has the beauty that it has today. Thank you to all of our staff. You may be seated. Thank you. Each year at commencement, we honor members of the graduating class who have achieved particular distinction in their four years at Amherst. I'll ask the winners of the prizes this year to come forward when I call your name. And as you come forward, I will give the audience a bit of information about you. The Obed Finch Slingerland Memorial Prize is awarded by the trustees of the college to a member of the senior class who has shown by determination and accomplishment the greatest appreciation of and desire for a college education. And this year's prize is awarded to Manuel Rodriguez. During his four years here, Manuel has embraced everything Amherst has to offer, as so many of you clearly know. His insatiable intellectual curiosity led him to study math, statistics, history, and literature before settling on a major in Latinx and Latin American studies. With his thoughtful and gregarious spirit and his remarkable compassion for other people, Manuel has enriched our community at every turn. He has served as a residential tutor in the Summer Bridge program, worked with faculty members as a research assistant and co-author, served as president of Latinx Cultural House, La Casa, and as junior chair of La Causa. He is an exceptionally gifted bass clarinetist and has played with various ensembles on campus. He was named a fellow in our Mellon Mays program, and he concluded his college career by writing an outstanding senior honors thesis on the sociology of Latinx religion. This fall, Manuel will begin doctoral studies in sociology at Notre Dame University in Indiana. Manuel, congratulations. The Woods Travis Prize, an annual gift in memory of Josiah Woods of Enfield and Charles B. Travis of the class of 1864, is awarded for what is called outstanding excellence in culture and faithfulness to duty as a scholar. This year's winner cannot yet be announced, unfortunately, because the end of the semester uh, came so late. When final grades have been calculated, the Woods Travis Prize will be awarded, and we will make sure you know who has received it. And now it is a great pleasure to introduce the senior chosen by the class of 2021, the bicentennial class, to address you this morning. Jordan Andrews graduates today with a double major in chemistry and computer science. Jordan, I believe you're known to your friends as Jojo, I learned. 
I hope you're here. Come forward. <laughs> Hey, Mom. Sorry you had to find out this way. <laughs> yeah, I kept it a secret from her, but you know, let's get into the let's get into this, shall we? Well, Amherst College Bicentennial Class of 2021, we've definitely had a rough go of it, didn't we? I know this year was different. But look on the bright side. I mean, we are the 200th class of students to graduate from Amherst. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> In fact, I prepared a few fun facts about the number 200 I'd like to share with you. For, for starters, in 200 BC, the Great Wall of China started being built. Or, how about in 1927, someone drove a car faster than 200 miles per hour for the first time? 200 is also less than a quarter of a percent of Amherst's total tuition for a year, but we don't, we don't need to talk about that. That's, you know, that's a, I'll be completely honest with you guys. When I attended last year's virtual commencement, I empathized with the class of 2020. I had a slight sense of relief. Phew, thank goodness that wasn't us. I'll see you guys at graduation during our completely normal school year. Now, here I am, counting the germs I'm putting on this microphone. Being the pompous STEM major I am, I calculated how much of our college experience we lost to the virus. We have spent about a third of our time at Amherst in the pandemic. How did we get here? Let's rewind for a second, shall we? <sighs> Freshman year. We all learned a lot about ourselves during that time, didn't we? When I pulled up the freshman quad, I was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. The air was electric, the sun was shining, and my mom was rushing me out of the car so she can convert my room at home into a spa. I could tell just by looking around that new experiences and opportunities awaited me. <laughs> I could tell just by looking around that new experiences and opportunities awaited me. When I arrived in my freshman dorm room, I noticed it was actually in the shape of an L and thought, man, I really hope that's not foreshadowing anything. <laughs> all, all jokes aside, there are not enough words to encapsulate how grateful I am for my time at Amherst. I've been a, in a lot of corners at this college and I learned a, quite a few things. For example, I learned the, that the students of color make Amherst an interesting and vibrant place thanks to spaces like the BSU and the MRC. I learned that two people with passion <laughs> <laughs> I learned that two people with passion can lead to a thriving community thanks to the Smash Club. I, <laughs> I even learned that in rugby, yes, you can get bruises on your eyeballs. Thanks, guys. <laughs> However, our time at Amherst wasn't always full of joy. Other than the pandemic, we faced unfortunate passings of our peers and professors, a disconcerting continuum of racial violence, and a tumultuous election period, to say the least. However, we're still here. We persevered. But what does that truly mean? According to Miriam Webster, <laughs> the definition of perseverance is, ah, just kidding, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> when you ask someone what they think perseverance means, you're going to hear similar answers wherever you go. Perseverance is never giving up, or pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, or eating a bowl of nails for breakfast without any milk. 
all interpretations are valid, but I've stuck with one during my time at Amherst. I believe perseverance is about your ability to renew yourself. Allow me to tell you a time I had to practice this. Picture this. After sophomore year, I just finished organic chemistry too, and man, I was feeling good about myself. Seriously, ask any pre-med student here and they tell you that organic is the boogeyman of STEM classes. Anyway, I received that sweet surge of validation from a grade that wouldn't matter in three days and looked to what's next on my chemistry path. Quantum chemistry. Uh-oh. Well, that shouldn't be too bad, right? That's the thing with the wormholes and stuff. I watched a Star Wars movie once or twice. What's the worst that can happen? On the first day of class, I was raring to go. I had just finished teaching myself how to spell the word quantum that morning, and nothing was gonna bring me down. That is, until I got to the lesson. For the first time in my Amherst career, I truly had no idea what my professor was talking about. And this was no fault of the professor, mind you. Professor Leung is a treasure. <laughs> <laughs> But this was, really, this was really a new experience for me. I was nervous, but I thought with some hard work, I'd be able to pull through eventually. A couple weeks pass, and the first exam is coming up. The material had never gotten easier, and despite my best efforts, I felt underprepared. I happened to run into Professor Durr, another chemistry professor, and asked him about his experience in quantum during undergrad. He looked me in my eye and said, quantum chemistry, huh? Just gotta get past that one. <laughs> and walked off. <laughs> it really seemed like the chips were against me for this exam, and lo and behold, I did poorly. And not like Amherst student, dang it, I got an A minus poorly. I was devastated. I know what you're thinking. Jordan, you sly dog. This is the part where you describe how you turn this around. I've heard it all before. Bring out the dancing mammoths. <laughs> well, no. This story does not have a happy ending. While I, while I was able to do corrections on my exams, the class was a consistent struggle for me until the very end. I felt defeated. I wondered if I, wondered if I had what it took to finish the major. I can't tell you how many times I filled out the drop major form in secret and considered sending it to my advisor. Chemistry was an immovable object, and I was a very stoppable force. <laughs> so, how did I get around this? Simple. I unplugged for a little bit. Don't worry, I still attended class, but I had a different mindset in them. I took some time to myself and dived into some of my hobbies and personal interests. I needed to heal myself. I convinced myself that I am entirely worthy of not only finishing the chem major, but being at Amherst as a whole. Back to perseverance. What is perseverance at Amherst College? Well, I can list a lot of things. I think of the English major in sea level frost finishing an essay. I think of the biology major going back to the Science Center because they have a new hypothesis. I think of the love and support we get from our countless resource centers in Keith. I think of the student who finally decided to head to the counseling center just to talk to someone. Perseverance doesn't only mean dealing with the hand you were dealt with, though. If that were the case in this country, I'd be looking at a much different audience and you'd be looking at a completely different speaker. Perseverance can also mean knowing when to stand against injustice even when the odds are against you. Congressman John Lewis once said, never, ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. I believe Congressman Lewis would be proud of this class thanks to the good, necessary trouble we got ourselves into. This year alone, we had black students leave their classes and occupy the space in front of Frost Library for the Black Minds Matter walkout. The Asian Student Association or organized vigils for victims of anti-Asian crimes, fundra fundraised for the Amherst Axe Campaign, and organized the anti-Asian hate rally on Garmin Lawn. The students at Sunrise Amherst made it their mission to get the college to divest from fossil fuels by 2025. Amherst college students, and especially the class of 2021, 
nor to stay strong and unify in the face of injustice. So, class of 2021, off we go into the real world. We're popping the Amherst bubble, and this time Liz Augusto is sending us home for good. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you all don't need me to tell you that the outside world is nothing like Amherst. No more swims, no more safe ride for free, no more waiting more than a week to get an appointment at the health center. Wait, isn't that a good thing? What, what's my final message? It would be really easy for me to say, go out and succeed immediately, but I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm going to tell you to do the best that you can do. If your best is going to continue your education at a master's or PhD program, that's amazing. If your best is beginning your career, that's amazing. If your best is returning home and renewing yourself, spending some quality time with loved ones, that's amazing. Your own level of success does not make you greater or lesser than anyone else. Congressman Lewis also said, to never let anyone, any person, or any force dampen, dim, or diminish your light. Teros Iradian, let them give light to the world. Each and every one of you watching, either in person or at home, has a vibrant light that the world deserves to see. And whether you decide to let it shine in 200 hours, 200 days, or 200 months, is up to you. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Beautiful speech. It is now my pleasure to announce the Phoebe and Zephaniah Swiftmore Teaching Awards. And many of you, but certainly not all of you, know that each year Amherst College honors three outstanding high school teachers who have made a difference in the lives of members of the graduating class and helped bring them where they are today. As I read each name, the teacher's picture will appear on screen, and I ask that the student nominator rise or wave to be recognized. The recipients of the 2021 Phoebe and Zephaniah Swiftmore Teaching Awards are Ralph D'Ambrosio, a chemistry teacher now retired from Garden City High School in Garden City, New York, nominated by Andrew Nagel. Andrew. The next winner is Alexandra M. C. McIntyre, a history and humanities teacher at the Mulgrave School in West Vancouver, Canada, nominated by Rafael Eduardo Dachery Gonzalez. Paul O'Rourke, a languages and humanities teacher at the Pierre Pierpont School in Westport, Connecticut, nominated by Willa Grant Grimes. Willa. Mr. O'Rourke's award is accepted by his son, Liam O'Rourke, a member of Amherst class of 2000. Liam is an English teacher also at the school where he works side by side with his father. Thanks to every one of these teachers and all of our school teachers for everything you do. What a year our teachers in the schools have had. A big round of applause for them all. Thank you.
Before we hear our choral society, I wonder if we could pause just for a moment, knowing that there are people here in the cage and people in Lafrac and at home who have suffered losses over the course of the year. In some cases, many losses. On Friday, our student speakers talked about the losses that you, the class of 2021, have endured. I wonder if we could take just a brief moment of silence to think about and honor those who have been lost and all of the things other than loved ones that we have all lost over the course of the past 15 months. Thank you. Our incredible choral society is directed by Ariane Nabella, and they uh, are not performing in person today because of safety, caution. But if you pay attention to the screens, you will see and you will hear a recording of the members of Amherst Choral Society performing Three Gifts, a piece that was written by one of our alumni Lisa Smith Vanderlinden of the class of 1989, and which is sung by the Choral Society at commencement every year.
200 years ago, Amherst's first president, Zephaniah Swift Moore, arrived on horseback from Williamstown with a satchel of books and 15 Williams students who were, wisely, transferring to Amherst. In our bicentennial planning, we had decided we would reenact this part of Amherst's origin story. The current president and 15 of you, members of the bicentennial class, on horseback, riding over a much smaller hill than the Hoosack Mountains onto the quad. But for COVID, I'm sure we would have done that. <laughs> there were only two graduates at commencement in uh, 200 years ago, Ebenezer Strong Snell and Pindar Field. Like you, they celebrated their graduation without receiving official degrees. And why was that? The college didn't receive a charter until 1825, in part because of opposition to the new college from Harvard, Yale, and Williams and from people in towns like Northampton that had competed with Amherst for a new college. The commencement was a festival that involved the entire town and surrounding region. It lasted all day, and it included more than a dozen orations in Greek, Latin, and English. I wasn't there, but it sure sounds like fun. <laughs> Honestly, I think it does. That's how they educated ministers in 1821. Not so much today. You could understand why Williams might resent us, their president having left to lead the new college in Amherst, adding insult to injury by saying he was leaving because Williamstown is simply too remote to attract students. For Harvard and Yale, the issue was competition and their objections to the orthodox Calvinism of the founders. Despite all the naysayers, on the campus, the students earned a lot of admiration, and not only from their faculty, for their seriousness of purpose. None other than Ralph Waldo Emerson, philosopher, essayist, and abolitionist, just out of Harvard, visited the relatively new college, and here's what he wrote. The infant college is an infant Hercules. Never was so much striving, outstretching, and advancing in a literary cause as is exhibited at Amherst. The students all feel a personal responsibility in the support and defense of their young al alma mater against antagonists. And the students are divided into thriving opposition societies, which gather libraries, laboratories, mineral cabinets with an indefatigable spirit, which nothing but rivalry could inspire. And he ends, upon this impulse, they write, speak, and study in a sort of fury, which I think promises a harvest of attainments. That's right, Ralph Waldo Emerson on Amherst. I think this intensity, this studying sometimes in a fury, also infuses Amherst today, not just in classrooms, but also in the other things that you decide to do. All the money that was raised for this college was earmarked for student financial aid and it could not be used for construction. Another fundraising campaign yielded South Hall, which stands today, though a little bit renovated since 1821. There were only funds initially for three professors, and what did they teach? Mathematics and natural philosophy, rhetoric, and what were called the learned languages. President Moore added moral theology, of uh, moral philosophy and theology. And the ministry was seen to be grounded in the study of these areas, math, natural philosophy, rhetoric, Greek, and Latin. The students lived very differently than the way you've lived at Amherst, despite 
the difficulties you've had. In his history of Amherst, Claude Moore Foose tells us, there was no danger that the collegians would be enervated by luxury. A portion of the 10 acres was set aside so that charity students could have their own plots of land for gardens. They took entire care of their rooms without the aid of a janitor or a chambermaid. They sawed their own wood, made their own fires, and drew their own water from the college well. We could have reenacted all of that if COVID hadn't gotten in the way. But we could also just go back 100 years, as Provost Epstein did on Friday, and reenacted the centennial speech given in 1921 by President Alexander Micklejohn. You won't remember that I spoke about Micklejohn at convocation in your first year, back in 2017. You might not even recall that Provost Epstein referred to him on Friday. But it's worth paying heed to Alexander Micklejohn. In his speech on the centennial celebration, he offered three hopes, which he called three prophecies for the next hundred years of the college. And interestingly, he opened by telling the assembled trustees and alumni that he was not speaking to them. His speech was addressed instead to us here today in 2021. He titled his speech, What Does the College Hope to Be During the Next Hundred Years? He was speaking at the end, after the end of World War I, in the midst of gloom over the failed peace, rising inflation, increasing inequality, anti-immigrant sentiment, and only a year after the pandemic known as the Spanish flu had come under control after killing tens of millions of people around the world. His first hope, prophecy, was that America should become independent politically and culturally from Anglo-Saxon culture of Britain. The best essay I have read on this speech was delivered during reunion this year by Robert Howard, class of 76. And in that talk, Howard reminds us that the term Anglo-Saxon came into use after Reconstruction as part of the effort to deny the role of slavery in the Civil War and to promote Anglo-Saxon supremacy. Micklejohn was arguing in 1921 for what today we might call diversity and anti-racism. He argued, as Provost Epstein mentioned on Friday, welcoming boys of other stocks, his language. And as Provost Epstein pointed out, he made sure that Amherst did. But this was given to an audience that included strong opposition to immigration and to racial equality, including Calvin Coolidge to be president soon thereafter of Amherst College. Knowing his audience, Micklejohn addressed them by saying, and this is quite a quote for 1921, we have already here one people whom we rule, with whom we do not genuinely associate. How many more subject races would we like to have? 1921, was also the year of the Tulsa Race Massacre, the murder of over 300 black citizens in attacks by whites on the ground and from the air, destroying a thriving black urban community, and then burying evidence of the massacre. May 31st to June 1st marks the 100th anniversary of that massacre. Micklejohn's second hope was that idealism would be restored to what he saw as an overly materialistic society. Men's lives are thwarted, he said, taunted, twisted, throttled, killed by circumstances of every sort. And that is our failure as much as it is theirs. 
He continued, each life shall be what it might be, what may be made of it, what under favoring circumstances it could become. The goal of a democratic society and a liberal arts college should be to ensure that under favoring circumstances, each life can be what it has the potential to be. And the college and the society should do what it can to create those favoring circumstances. And you have pointed out that we here at this college have not yet done enough. And I accept the criticism. Micklejohn's third prophecy was that faith would be restored, not religious faith per se, but faith in the values he associated with democracy. Among those values, he included education, liberal arts education. And here's what he said about the society in 1921. This lack of faith appears today most clearly in our cleverness. We have become too shrewd. We know too well the tricks of using for our own ends both men and truth. Howard suggests, and I agree, that Micklejohn believed people had to learn how to be democratic through critical intelligence and ethical understanding. And he took both critical intelligence but also ethical understanding to be the goals of an Amherst education. Just two years after Micklejohn gave this centennial speech, he was forced to resign by the trustees. No one knows the actual reasons. He was said to have been a bad administrator, in part a bully who had stirred a faculty revolt against his attempts to require the teaching of courses that would give students ways of understanding social, economic, and political realities of the day. Some said that he and his wife had overspent, or that his wife had misused funds. It's always the wife. He left Amherst and went to the University of Wisconsin, another place in my heart where he created a liberal studies program that still exists, but not part of the required curriculum. So here we are now in 2021, a world that is different and not different enough from the world of Alexander Micklejohn in, in 1921. We are seeing the damage to democracy that results from denials of science, evidence, and truth. We're living with the undeniable consequences of extreme economic and racial inequalities, exposed in yet another way in the disproportionate impact of COVID on Black and Latinx communities and on the poor and elderly all over the world. And we have seen the scourge of bigotry in overt white supremacist or Anglo-Saxon speech including violence against Asian and Asian Americans. What Micklejohn could not have known in 1921 was the urgency of global warming and the human causes of it and the pressing need to take immediate and concerted action against it. At Amherst, we have succeeded in bringing a very diverse group of students fulfilling Micklejohn's hope in that way but we have not yet created the conditions that would make Amherst as inclusive and equitable as it needs to be, to the detriment of too many students, students of color, students with disabilities, queer and trans students, among many others. Your time at Amherst has been full of extraordinary challenge for all of you. And yet you too have studied in a kind of fury, as Amherst expects. And with the support of faculty, staff, and friends, you have stretched intellectually beyond what you probably could have imagined when you arrived. You've completed your coursework 
over 15 months during a global pandemic and with constant reports of racial violence. During your time at Amherst, Anglo-Saxon supremacism, supremacism has been on full display in the country and it has been made overt at the highest levels. And still you rise to the challenge while also challenging the wrongs. I have tremendous respect for you. Despite the constraints that have been required by COVID, the losses of time and proximity to one another, and the exhaustion of having to fight against racism and gender norms, among many other ills, not only beyond the bubble, but also within it. Despite all of that, you have done remarkable work and you've shown remarkable leadership. Eight of you have won Fulbright grants. Jeremy Thomas was named a Rhodes Scholar, and two of you were awarded the prestigious Watson Fellowships, Inyola Ajao and Margaret Lurie. Forty-four of you wrote senior theses, and many of us had the good fortune to hear about some of them at the Zoom production of the three-minute thesis competition. Three minutes of incredible clarity from each of you about topics as complex as biodegradable plastics, the possible molecular basis of autism spectrum disorders, anti-Asian hate and violence, and some of us also got to hear thesis presentations, brief ones, in physics and astronomy, equally clear and compelling, even if not always understood by this particular guest. Improvements in the course of the virus and vaccinations near the end of the semester allowed me to attend three live events, only three, usually in the spring, I attend so many more. The first was Project 2020, an art installation, which took place on a beautiful night, brisk and clear, with a full moon rising above Merrill, and student films were projected on the walls of the building, and videos of students using dance and movement to reflect on the isolating experience of COVID. The second live performance was the Dance and Step at Amherst College Showcase. Just a couple of weeks ago, hundreds of students sat in folding chairs or on blankets on the rolling green hills of the outdoor amphitheater outside the Science Center. The performances were riveting. I marveled at the talent of the dancers who are also choreographers all of them current students, many of them you, seniors. I was amazed by your technical and design artistry, also done primarily by students. And I wondered how you could possibly have imagined, planned, created, practiced, and performed so extraordinary a show while completing coursework, participating in student government, getting tested three times a week, and keeping distant and safe. It was simply remarkable. And third, with a handful of others, I attended Obed Anasa's senior organ recital in Buckley, where Obed played three gorgeous pieces of music, very different pieces, that he had chosen and interpreted in a breathtakingly beautiful recital. Obed has studied organ while at Amherst with a faculty member at Mount Holyoke, traveling to South Hadley to use the organ. And then COVID hit. Knowing that he would be lost and unable to do thesis work without an organ, Professor David Schneider in our music department searched far and wide until he found an organ somewhere nearby at a place that rents organs to bands for a night or two at a time. And David Schneider convinced them to rent it for 10 months. And with the help of our incredible staff, the organ was moved into Obed's 
dorm room, where he was able to practice with headphones at any time of day or night in preparation for his remarkable recital. And these stories of student achievement, faculty inspiration and support, and the generosity and the competence of our staff are the best that Amherst has to offer. They're the best any place has to offer. We have been given valuable lessons during COVID in how interdependent we are. As the Dalai Lama often says, we are not made for independence, but for interdependence. How much we need each other. Our success in keeping people safe depended on your restraint, your hard work and cooperation, and on the resilience of faculty and staff. And you students, not all equally I know, rewarded our trust in you by doing what was needed. Now, I just briefly want to go back for a moment to your first day at Amherst in August 2017. After you unpacked, you gathered for a program that included a short talk I gave about Amherst's values. And after I spoke, you were asked to list the three words that made the biggest impression on you for the purpose of creating a word cloud. I, I didn't know anything about word clouds, but there it is. That's the word cloud that you created in 2017. And clearly, friendship stood out followed by an emphasis on diversity, support, community, intellectual, excellence, and others. And these are the values, that is, friendship, diversity, support, community, intellectual, and excellence, that we need to have cohere in ways they don't yet fully cohere. And in your Integrate Amherst campaign, you have said as much. Because you dwelled on the importance of friendship in the celebrations you had this spring, which I was able to hear at least some of online, I heard you give beautiful tributes to your friends at special ceremonies. I just want to dwell on the importance of friendship to our well-being and our growth. We become who we are, I think, because of the worlds that are opened up by the friends we make. And I have had the great fortune in my life of having close friends, friendships that have held for 40 years since our days as students in Madison, Wisconsin. We studied in different fields. We were all involved in the gay and lesbian activism of the time and in the still nascent women's studies program. We got to know each other through intellectual interests at a moment when it was not only possible but imperative that we let the one, our intellectual lives, be influenced by the other, our political and personal lives. In winter, we took time out from our studies to go cross-country skiing in the Arboretum. On weekends, we gathered for coffee and talked until late afternoon. There was no season in which we did not interrupt dissertation work to go to Ella's Deli for ice cream sundaes. I don't know how many we ate. I don't know how we did it, but I'm still proud. We stood on picket lines during the teaching assistant strike together. We made flyers protesting academic conferences in our departments that had included no women. When I asked as a grad student to teach feminist theory, I was asked to teach feminist theory to undergraduates. The entire friend group came to every class so that we could read and digest the material together and so they could tell me where they thought I had gone wrong. We lived in a time when friendship, intellectual life, and political activism were bound up with one another, sometimes in tension with one another, but in ways that made everything we were doing seem to matter and you live in such a time as well. We used to travel an hour and a half to at least one performance at the outdoor Shakespeare Theater. And once after a performance of The Merchant of Venice, a wonderful performance, for some reason we got into a rip-roaring fight 
about Heidegger on the way home. Yeah, <laughs> hard to understand, but we did, and there was so much anger in the exchange that I worried the friendships could not be repaired. Heidegger can inspire that kind of anger as well as reverence. All the new friendships that each one of us has made over 40 years have enriched our friendships, all our friendships, and they have allowed all of us to be part of much bigger worlds than we could have been on our own. We've learned what friendship teaches about the value of honesty and commitment, how trust is earned, that it has to be earned, and how it can be sustained in the face of disagreement, disappointment, periods of discord, even long periods of separation. In that way, friendship is a lesson about what societies need. It is, in its enduring form, friendship requires the acknowledgement of the wrongs we commit against one another and the harm they can do. Societies need to acknowledge the harm they have done, even in friendships when the harm might have been inadvertent. I believe that love of country and love of a college, not only the love of a friend, requires acknowledging and setting right the harm when it has been made apparent. There can be no true bonds among people, no friendship of the private or the public kind without truth-telling. For leaders to lie about known facts is an assault on our sense of reality. To do that intentionally not only sows division, it also affects everyone's mental health. In the face of gaslighting, friendship and solidarity, a shared sense of what's real and what's true are all the more important, and especially for those whose very identities are under attack. I had that solidarity, and I know many of you do as well. College is for intellectual development, for acquiring habits of mind that will serve you throughout your lives, not just in careers, but in relations to yourselves and to others. College is also for making friends and for the development of those qualities that friendship requires. And at their best, these two qualities, these two projects, the intellectual and the interpersonal, inform and enhance one another. I hope, as alumni, you will carry your friendships with you, that you'll build new friendships, maybe with classmates here today that you didn't get to know while students. Our goal here at Amherst, which you will continue to help us reach as alums, is to help us reach a different and more aspirational goal, past the focus we have placed on the students we have brought or attracted here, to something more important, to ensuring that every one of those students can be okay and can also thrive, but first, on a day-to-day -day basis, can be okay, and then have equal access to the best the place has to offer. That is our aspiration, and that is our concrete intention, and that we haven't realized it yet, to the extent we must, makes me sad for those of you who have felt harm. We are launching you into a world that doesn't actually make these promises. Whatever your relationship to the college has been as a student, I hope you realize that when you're out there in that world that doesn't always make these promises of friendship and equity, that you will remember that Amherst is always here, regardless of your experience over these four years. It has been here for its graduates for 200 years. 
our alumni have made the college what it is today, through their philanthropy, for sure, but also their engagement and their criticism of the college. I expect nothing less of you. Your insistent critiques have helped move things forward. And even when we have not agreed about the pace of change or the process through which change can come, I have had the greatest admiration for your determination to create a better Amherst and a much better world. I know you will advance every institution or cause that you take up. The world has never needed you more. Congratulations to all of you, and thank you. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts please come forward? Pearl Accord. <laughs> Jaya Ayanla Adams. Anna Catherine Lily Agathis. Justin Awa. Eviosa Imufwa. Eniola Ajao. Zoe Camille Sewa Akodo. Matthew Albino. Benjamin Fernando Aliaga. Kira Kathleen Laban Elventosa. Shu Amano. Obed Kwamina Emisa. David Anaski in absentia. Jordan Mackay Andrews. Tristan Keith Andreski. Sam Aparicio. Adi Arifovic. Afia Asare. Jordan M. O'Coin. Jacob Yusuf Ayub, in absentia. Arman Azad.
Margaret Ann Dado Azu. Walid Babur. Violet Judeline Bain. Michael Nuri Bakshande. Pedro Betancourt Balduino Moraes. Oliver Burt Baldwin Edwards. William Otto Balmer. Kara Nicole Barclay. Michael Barnes in absentia. Brett Donald Bates. Ana Lucia Batanglino. Maria Eduarda Belota Moreno. Derek Benson. Stephen Berlin. Ali Bienname. Dorjan Vlache. Catherine Bobak. Jacob Bohm. Andrea Boskovich. Jonah River Botvinik Greenhouse. Sarah Taylor Bradley, in absentia. David Branson, in absentia. Regional Maurice Brewster. Armando Ignacio Brito. Nathan Olaf Britch, in absentia. Whitney Bruno. Gabriela Zitlali Busio. Stephen Burke, in absentia. Catherine Grace Burkhart. Aaron Bushnell, in absentia. Stephanie Calderon. Mariama Alexis Akusua Kamara. Bridget Carmichael. Nicholas Carolyn.
Grayson Carter. Isaac William Caruso. Frunui Ruben Che, in absentia. Graham Richard Chickering. Cami Maya Cho. Grace B. Cho. Daniel Cho. Eugene Choi Park. Yuna Choi, in absentia. Grant James Chrysicus. Madeline Connor. Vivian Elizabeth Cordone. James Cravato. Catherine Lynn Crum. Michael William James Cullen. Evan DeWitt Daisy. Francesca Daniels. Thomas Christopher DePril Jr. Eunice Uluwa Damilola Daudu. Grace Davenport. Haley David. <laughs> Abigail Mott Davis. <laughs> Nathaniel Lewis DeYoung. <laughs> Rafaela Demarath. Evangelista Stella Di Mujeto. <laughs> Mia Yinler Del Rosso. <laughs> Natalie De Rosa. <laughs> Jelly Morin Fudge Baite. Elizabeth Doe. <laughs> Melody Nadenswa Dodu. <laughs> Edwin Zuriel Dominguez in absentia. <laughs> Sindel Donaldson. Sanakshi Dua. Mary Claire Bevan Dunbar. Matthew Durborough. Isabella Rosina Ido. Mesmore Edo in absentia. 
Devin Kinori Bezdechek Epstein. Julian Erickson Watson. Ronnie Marie Falasco. Mamastu Fall. Jack Hoyt Falstuck. Daniel Feldman, in absentia. Nina Jatko Fitzgerald. Benjamin Lewis Fleischman. Haley Fleming. Jasper Flint. Emma Isabel Flynn. Ryan Hamilton Ford. Timothy Isaac Fowler, in absentia. Megan Sexton Foy. Jacob Frank. Sophia Isabella Friedman. Dana Frischman. Hildy Gable. Elijah Lamont Gaddy. Sean Gow. Fernando Garcia Toro, in absentia. Turner Garland. Bruce Gashirabake, in absentia. Sarah Geyer. Griffin Gerwig. Michael Gibson, Jr. Olivia Giger. Andreas Gilpin Falk. Benjamin Xavier Gilsdorf. Maria Christiana Gurgeau. Martin Busby Glusker. Felipe David Gomez Magruder. Rafael Gonzalez. Frederick Goodson IV. Sebastian Grace. Haley Green. Paul Griesel, Jr. Willa Light Grimes. Samuel James Grondon. Jake Grossman. Wilson Gubernick.
Sirig Gurung. Hannah Grace Gustafson. Grace Hawes. Teresa Toshiko Haberstro. Delina Hadgu. Campbell Hannon. Audrey Hansen. Jack Harlan. Yuki Hadada. Connor Haw. Terrell Jordan Houghton. Claire Monroe Hawthorne. Katarina Heffron. Olivia Grant Henriksen. Amos Ho in absentia. Caitlin Hong. Claire Dreyer Holloman. Eleanor Hollers. Ellie Hong. Samuel Gammon Hood. Maya Hossein. Xiao Ho in absentia. John Shu. Jack Bailey Hutchinson. Michael Daniel Immerman. Alice Rose Heather Jackson in absentia. Mickey Jackson in absentia. Shantam Ja. Liambi G. Juyen Ja. Rachel Jin, in absentia. Noah John. Grace Elizabeth Johnson. William Cole Johnson. Jared Jones. Kyle Michael Jones. Hannah Joyce. Eric Danger Jung. Peter Kang. Gregory Mitchell Kaplan. Bibi Yusra Kadir. Sarah Kauf 
Hoffmann. Ala Kamaram. Ethan Kazmierski. Joseph Anthony Kelly. Horace Mahmoud Kaur. Emily Kiernan. Nina Kiley. Sue Kim in absentia. Joshua Kim. Louie Kim. Quinn Jiwoo Kim in absentia. Sarah Minji Kim. Sion Kim. Yasol Kim in absentia. Mallory Kimbrell. Daria Kim Percy. Danielle King. Meredith Christina King. Ariel Jasmine Curvin. Jack Kirick. Yuna Lubov Klinsuk. Green Co. Robin Kong. Kyler Jordan Kopas. Catherine Krosniak. Drake Kufwafwa. Conrad Kuklinski. Dana Christine Kulma. Boren Kuzan in absentia. Anissa Lacey. Emily Lotera. Lauren Christian Lamb. Hunter Bain Lampson. Nico Longwa. Constantine Laren. David Bell Larson. Seamus Lawton. Daniel Lee. Eileen Lee. Harreen Lee. Jackson Sungjin Lee. Kihuang Lee. Matthew Lee. Serena Hana Lee. Ayo Delay Simone Green Lewis. Koang Lee. Oh. 
Natalie Blair Lima. Sabrina Lynn. Margit Liu. Samantha Liu. Jack Lloyd. James Walker Logan. Annika Lundstedt. Olivia Sean Luntz. Margot Ruth Lurie. Kevin Ma. Jinji Ma in absentia. Brenna Lane Makare. Evan Mailer. Pat Maney in absentia. Christiana Vittoria Mariano. Jason Marshall. Tyler Andrew Marshall. Hamza Masid. Joe Masterson. Ashira Mauji. Jamie Mazzola. Dennis Mbite. Sienna Willow McCulley. Carolyn G. McCusker. Nehemiah Gregory McGowan. Rilla McKeegan. Aiden McLeod in absentia. Lauren Diane McNeil. Sabir Mia. James Salvatore Melican. Ariana Mello. Robert Meyer. Oliver Lawrence Michaud. Zachary Miller, in absentia. Emily Buxton Minus. Lauren Michelle Miranda, in absentia. Cameron Avery Ray Mitchell. Maya Mizrahi. Julia Catherine Moline. Dylan Montplaisir. Marielle Diana Montero Likes. Jackie Montes de Oca. Grace Penny Marie Montoya. (laughs) 
Sarah Montoya. Aaliyah Marie Moore. Andrew George Gordon Moore, in absentia. Natalie Elizabeth Morgan. Tomajin Morikawa, also known as Tomajin Morikawa Fouquet. Leah Catherine Maureen. Rose McDougal Morasca. Colin Murphy. Andrew Nagel. Nate Snagul. Claire Bouchamp Nam. Obed Narcisse. <laughs> Hannah B. Nyditz. Derek Newberry. Henry Marshall Newton. Ramses Antadia Mejula. Ngashoka. Sai Nguyen. Kyle Nguyen. Tai Nguyen, in absentia. Tony Nee, in absentia. Daniel Mew, in absentia. Rebecca Novak. Maya Francis Noyes. Abigail Equia Echama Afeado. Anthony Vicente Ornales, in absentia. Harrison Osborne. Isabel Oyang. Isabel Wong Payne. Phoebe Palmer. Joseph Owen Palmo. Arnav Parikh. Robert Curtis Parker. Jackson Mills Patton. Tasia Pavo. Dylan Delaney Peabody. Corina Perez Cobb. Matthew Perkins. Lucien Perot. Samara Bryn Phillips in absentia. Aliyah Pimentel Landestoy. Allison Sage Plowman. Yeah. 
Ava Podell. Olivia Polishek. Camille Alexandra Polk. Ryan Anthony Prenosil. Isaiah Price. Devin Eleanor Dawkin Prieto. Langston Wren Puller. Michael Purvis. Elijah Quassler. Naveed Rahimi Laki. Julian Taylor Rayford. Julia Ralph. C.M. Randall. Emma Sophie Ratchin. Baylor Eve Ratson. Paige Elizabeth Reddington. Danielle Jean Reed. Danielle Grandon Kajeko. Jordan Ariel Roadman. Brianna Richards. Avery Riggs in absentia. Leah Ritterband. Maxwell Robertson. Manuel Rodriguez. Danny Taehyung Ro. Adriel Julio Roncal. David Antonio Rosa, in absentia. Donna May Roscoe. Ella Taylor Rosa. Samantha Rothberg. Trishala Roy. Zan Mukin Rosen, in absentia. Lindsay Victoria Ruderman. Rachel J. Ruderman. Zachary Rudolph, in absentia. Julia Ruggiero. Samantha Chariton Razuski. Matt Zultzman. Damani Sama Bourbon.
Riddy Samput. Marco Antonio Sanchez Fernandez. Matthew Sanders. Laurel Alexis Cortez Sang. Yili Kal Tilohan Sarka. Zach Shore. Kevin Scott Schroeder. Braxton Riley Schultz. Heather Rose Scott. Ned Searles. Nava Safari Sadig. <laughs> Nissan Chalet. <laughs> Isabel Marguerite Sennett. <laughs> Clara Che Young Sa. Julia So. Carson James Shaw. William Hines Shaw, in absentia. Julia Shea. Reed Schilling. Enoch Young Min Shin. Nathaniel P. Shogren. Ryan Schultes. Dashiell Schulman. David Schuster. Jacob Siegel. Lauren Elizabeth Simpson. Wilson Sitole. Ash Smith, in absentia. Kyland Thornton Smith. Tristan So. Scott Song. Esther Eugen Song. Micah Adeline Starr. In absentia. Bridget Kenna Staus. Chun Tak Suen. In absentia. Kathleen Sullivan. Tamer Sullivan. Witter Swanson. Andrew Swenson. Sarah Patricia Tam. Antonia Tomorrow. Andrew R. Tofik. Madison Taylor.
Kai Tarada Herzer, in absentia. Karina Salim Thanawala. Jeremy Thomas. Camilo Torunio. Evelyn Rose Touchette, in absentia. Nicole Francis Treza. Sabrina Trombetta. Naomi Alice Truex. Botman Lai Toft. Alicia Rose Ugenti. Sasha Valone. Nicole Casey Vandal. Santiago Vargas Garcia. Shreya Venkat. Gib Versfeld. Renan Viana. In absentia. Anna Maria Vietes. Ryan Wagner. Flanagan Walter. Addison Wall. David Wang. Eric Wang. Justin Davis Waring. Pascal Catherine Fay Wasson. Andrea E. Webb. Ingrid Stadheim Weffing. Sean Way. Catherine M. Weisbrot. Zachary Parker Weston. Joshua Huang. Javier Fernando Whitaker Castaneda. Caleb Williams. Elliot Williams. Luke David Williamson. Rebecca Wistrike. Calvin Woods. Thomas Curtis Woodville. Lily Grace Warden. Kaylin Shea. Benjamin Primo Yared.
Heel Yin. Lindsay Yu. Cohen Yun. Marina Isabel Zambrano Mora. Kevin Drong. Samuel Zhang. Zhang Yishu. In absentia. Angela Jaw. Leslie G. Jung. Crystal Yuching Jo. Danielle Zimber. Will the candidate Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree please rise? President Martin, on behalf of the faculty of Amherst College, it is my pleasure, honor, and privilege to present to you today candidates for whom we have or expect affirmation from the faculty and trustees that they have completed all the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Thank you, Provost Epstein. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Amherst College, upon affirmation from the faculty and trustees that you have completed the requirements for the degree Bachelor of Arts, I will confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. You can sit. <laughs> After the sheriff brings today's ceremony to a close, we will all recess in the same order in which we processed into Lafrac, I believe, through Lafrac, where you'll see your guests. Uh, please remain seated while the faculty stands and recesses and follow them row by row with guidance from the class marshals, your class marshals. You can reunite with your guests and help yourselves to the individually packaged meals. They'll be offered in the tent located just outside of Lafrac near Memorial Field. And for the guests, this tent is located outside of the exit that is in front of you. You're welcome to enjoy lunch indoors in alumni gym as well. Graduates, please don't forget to take your bicentennial bags under your chairs with you when you leave. Will the sheriff please bring these proceedings to a close? The 200th commencement of Amherst College is hereby adjourned. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs>